Hello, so today I'm going to have a look at an East German AK. Sadly it's deactivated, um, but I've always wanted an East German AK. Because um, I think out of the old Warsaw Pack designs, they're probably my favourite one. Uh, they were generally considered the best quality, but looking at it, some of the kind of fit and finish on these does look a bit weird, but never mind, we'll get on to that. So anyway, this is the East German AK. Um, I believe this was called the MPI KMS, so the AK series are all um, MPIs, which I assume was their sort of designation for assault rifles or whatever. And then I think the S bit means that it's got the folding stock, because the, the MPI KM seems to have the um, standard stock, and I think they have 74 in the name if it's the AK-74 rather than the AKM style one. So I've got my old East German bayonet on here, which has, has had the Bakelite rotting off of it for a while, so if you didn't see on a much older video, I basically said I've been chipping that Bakelite off because it would cut your hands if you physically touched it. Um, and hopefully at some point I can get the last of the Bakelite off and then make a nice new handle for it. So that's it anyway with the bayonet on, but I'll take that off now, so the bayonet still comes off the usual way. Oh, it's a bit dodgy coming off. Anyway, there is a cleaning rod for this, but I won't bother showing you that, it's just a cleaning rod that slits down there. And once you have the bayonet on, you can't have the cleaning rod on, or vice versa, because they get in the way of each other. So, the nice thing of this is that it has a side folding stock similar to the Bulgarian side folders. Now, some people like these stocks, some people hate them in terms of how good a cheek weld you can get. Um, doesn't seem too bad, but obviously it's not as good as having a proper stock or a proper folding stock that's got like a cushioned bit on there for obvious reasons. But it is a good folding stock design as in, you know, it sits in basically with gravity and a bit of friction there. Pull it out, and it locks using this little tab a bit like a mag release tab which is actually a really good way of having a folding stock I'm surprised more guns don't use that kind of little tab there rather than having you know like a weird kind of pull apart system for the folding stock but I think more modern folding stocks are kind of using that design of like button releases rather than you know like trying to push it in a counter angle to the gun so how they've deactivated this gun all of this is welded shut completely barrels filled in uh, trigger, although it pulls, is disconnected from the action inside. You know, they've just essentially cut it and then put some welded scrap in there. Obviously, the mag does come in and out. I haven't even got any inert rounds in this one, but that's how the mag works. Now, the reason these German AKs I think were considered quite good was because they were generally, because obviously made in German factories, apparently the fit and finish of them was a bit better, ignoring, you know, the look of the paint on the side there. But I think that's because they put some sort of anti-rusting sort of black paint on it that's obviously just fading due to age on this one now. Um, but the East German AKs always had really nice looking handguards with that, I guess, a Bakelite looking um, sort of ribbed pattern on it. Not sure if it's actually pl plastic or bake light. It seems more like bake light to me, but um, that was the design they had. And again, you sometimes do have the weird things with these where the top covers always seem to be different colours. And I've seen some weird pictures of East German ones where they've got this as the bottom bit in bake light and then a wood top one. Now, where they've deactivated this one again, unlike my older RPK, they've uh, actually stopped you from taking the gas block out of this one, so I can't show you that. I'm not going to take the top cover off because, again, it's the really bloody annoying thing with a Diac um, AK where once you take the dust cover off, it's really hard to get back on because the bits don't move underneath as they should do. So it's not held on the way you'd think it would be, so putting it back together doesn't work as it should, you know, and it's a lot of pissing about getting annoyed until all the parts line up properly and it snaps back shut. So yeah, obviously the advantage of having an AK with a side folding stock or an underfolder is the fact that it's a lot more transportable. Because obviously with a sling you could have it like that or over your back, good for vehicle crews, and then obviously you can just do this to start engaging with it. And the iron sight picture isn't awful. Again, it's an AK iron sight, which I don't like. Um, there's no surprise that more modern AKs have started now using better sights or just use optics like most people would. Um, but yeah, it's quite an interesting gun, the East German AK. Oh, and if you get the cleaning rod and put it down there, you only get to about that far um, before the uh, obviously the cleaning rod runs into obviously where they put a weld in the barrel. So yes, again, this is deactivated because I'm looking down it. Um, you've got the famous AKM style muzzle brake there, which was basically designed to make the recoil control more controllable. Because I think on the original AK, sort of 47 style AK, or just the AK, when you shot it, it pulled up, was it to the right, or pulled up to the left? And the idea of this muzzle brake is it adds a bit more weight in the direction, so the control is kind of more just less, obviously less 
climbing full stop, but when it climbs it's kind of more in a predictable pattern, so it's easier for a soldier to keep it on, you know, thing. So fire selector does still work, obviously it just doesn't do anything, but actually saying that, this does have a nice checkered um fire selector if you can see that there, wrong side. Don't know why I'll show up on camera, but it's got some nice checkering on there. So I guess those are the little things that make people like the um, East German AKs are literally just because of the fact it's got nicer fit and finish. As I said, the metal on this one does not look nice now. I think mostly due to its age, wear and tear. But um, I guess when these were brand new out of the factory, they were a nicer sort of build of AK. Um, so yeah, the mag release did seem fairly good as well, just to show you that. So, mag out. Rock the mag in. Oh, I'm fucking this up because I'm trying to actually do it. So, <laughs> but yeah, the um, so the mag lock in, and I did try it. There we go. Does seem to be a bit less shaky than other AKs I've handled, the Ackmans and whatever. But again, that might just be a particular gun example because I know of a lot of um, the sort of Soviet block of guns. You'd quite often get ones where some of the bits would fit really well. That was the PPSH's major problem. You'd have to almost keep a mag with a gun when you found one where it was a good connection. Because my PPSH has a mag that just does not want to come out or go in. As in, it's just too tight. Um, where others were really shaky and loose and didn't feed properly, apparently. So, um, according to a lot of videos on the PPSH, it was kind of when they found a good mag for a particular PPSH, it would just stay with that PPSH because of, you know, like the varying degrees of um, quality control on the mags. Um, but there you go, so that's an East German AK, obviously deactivated sadly. If you get one of these in America, please, please, please do not break off the furniture. There was one of those horrifying things, a bit like when you see the My Little Pony guns, where I saw an American that got an East German AK, took a chisel and a hammer to it, and fucking broke apart all of this really nice, kind of unique handle that the East German ones have, to replace it with an M4 style grip, and I thought, what the fuck are you doing? Um... Again, if you could find a way of safely taking it off without damaging it, that's another thing. But literally breaking apart an East German AK to, um, you know, tactical it is kind of a monstrosity. Um, so yeah, as I said, I really do like the look of this. Compared to um, at least the RPK I've got, this does seem a lot more modular. I definitely prefer, uh, prefer the side folder to the under folder stocks that like, a lot of the AKs had, like the Russian ones. Because this side folder does just seem a lot more convenient to, um, you know, stow away and then pull out and you know you're ready to go so yeah this definitely seems like a better stock design on this one even if again you can't get the best of cheek welds on these sort of coat hanger wire side folders it doesn't seem bad but yeah as said i can definitely see the appreciation of these german ak's even if this one's fit and finish is a bit you know crap as i said and as i've said with the bayonet the reason that I had to break the bake light, start breaking the bake light off this one was because it was starting to just chip due to age and it meant if you put your hand on it you'd get cuts and bake light splinters in your hand. So as soon as I figure a way of finally getting last that bake light off, I want to you know clean all the metal up on this one. And then basically, because I need to re-grind the tip as well, if you can see that the tip's a bit broken on this one from something. Um, but yeah, I want to, um, assuming I can't just find another East German AK bayonet for sale somewhere, I'll refit this one to kind of look as close to that colour of plastic as I can. But yeah, so as I said, it just goes on like you'd expect. Although, without the furniture on it, makes that a bit, that's gone a bit better that time, but yeah. And again, the AK bayonets are weird because they always, they're like kind of an upside down bayonet, which I don't know why they designed it like that, but there you go. Um, I need to get a proper sling for this one because my regular um, sort of Russian style AK slings don't fit these because they're slightly different tabs for mounting the slings on these German ones. So these ones require the style of sling where you have obviously a bit of lever or whatever that goes over and buttons over or you could do, it, do one with, um, you know, obviously like the modern slings where you've just kind of got like a carabiner type clip on them. Because um, some of the Russian AK slings when you look at them actually have that kind of weird sort of, it's a bit like if you had it on a, um, which, you know like when you had the old webbing pattern belts and they had the sort of bits you have to crimp into each other, it's kind of like that. Well you might be able to get those to work on here, I suppose, if you put some pliers to them, but it seems a bit of a silly way of doing it. So again, I'll probably get a nicer sling for this one, seeing as this is, you know, a nicer AK, I'll definitely clean this up a bit um, after this video, but again, it probably just needs a fresh coat of paint, I imagine, on some of that, because I think it's just that the paint's fading, that's why it doesn't look nice. 
But yeah, fit and finish of these German AK does seem at least on, you know, from even holding it banged up the AK one, like the bits do just work a bit better. Um, you know, as I said, the furniture is the bit that everybody likes about them. Like that handguard, and if you got one with the full on stock, it's got a really nice sort of, again, checkered um, bake light or plastic stock, whatever they used, you know, that looks a bit nicer than, unless you get a really good condition wooden stock, it looks a lot nicer in terms of, um, you know, probably giving you a good cheek weld and sight picture and everything. So yeah, there you go, there's the East German AK. Um, I think it's some of the Bulgarian ones that look quite similar when you see them. Again, the handguards look a bit different. The side folder looks very similar, but I don't know if it's the exact same mechanism or not. I think some even the Chinese AKs had a similar side folding stock to this one. But, um, yeah, but as you can see, again, there is at least checkering on there for a shoulder thing, which a lot of side sort of stocks or skeleton stocks don't have. A lot of them just literally have a flat bit of metal. So, yeah, the East German AK. Definitely like it. Um, again... Was it worth the money I spent on it? Probably not, because, um, you know, what prices are like with everything at the moment, as I've said, and inflation and everything else, but at the same time, I knew it was one of these things with this, that if I didn't buy one of these when I saw them for sale on a deactivated site, it would probably be years before another one turned up, and then it would be way more. To give you an example, when I bought my L1A1 SLR in probably 2012 or something like that, that was just under £400, now I've never seen a deactivated one under £1,500. Um, so again, some deacts are actually quite good value in terms of keeping as an investment in that sense, because they do go up better than the rate of inflation and whatever else. But the problem is with, um, just as a deact, just as a side note, as I can tell you, a weapon collector can tell you, or quite a few people in the UK with deacts, is when they change the rules on how a gun has to be deact, if you want to then sell it, um, you know, legally sell it anyway, you have to then basically have it re-deactivated and spend a load of money to do that to the new standards, um, which is the really frustrating bit. So basically it means if you've got, um, you know, an older deact where lots more bits move on it, you know, they've maybe just done some cuts and welds to the barrel, like was legal at one point, you then have to spend like 200, 300 pounds having a proof house, you know, weld more bits, cut more bits out um, to then resell it. So again, that cuts into your profit and it kind of feels bad doing that to even the Diac gun, in my opinion. But there you go, East German AK. Um, I should have put my Stauhelm on, I guess, for doing this one, my M56, but I think I've got that in a box at the moment, so I can't conveniently put it on. Um, but yeah, the uh, East German AK is certainly... Um, like I said, one of my favourites also, I just think East Germany was probably the most aesthetic looking of all the communist bloc states due to, um, you know, the funny helmets and the kind of Wehrmacht looking uniforms that they had. Um, and they had the best anthem easily of any of the communist states. So there we go. Like I said, I'm definitely not a fan of communism, but the GDR, DDR and the NVA, I think, looked quite cool anyway. Even if the cars were Trabants and whatever else.